Anthropos, Human Being, Mensch, Luomo, Człowiek. What defines us as human being? Is it walking upright? Is it intuition, our instinct? Is it the ability to take more responsibility as human beings? Is it to have a goal, a target? Animals survive using their instincts. Humans survive using their wits. I asked around, what makes us human? And I received different answers based on their personal experience. Some said laughing, smiling, and I hope you do smile every day. Others said crying, thinking. Others mentioned multitasking. And one referred to Darwin, to his evolution theory. Our ancestors, they went through several fundamental anatomical modifications, as you can see in this slide, to shift from four legs to two, to bipedal, upright, homo erectus, as you can see here. And according to research, anthropologist says, we are the only species on this planet with a foresight capable of deliberately plotting a path toward a desirable long-term goal. Walking upright freed our hands for carrying tools and to manipulating things. It opened up new opportunities and it is considered actually as a key step for our brains to grow. So tell me, was this what Darwin was expecting? And we were using our hands. But are we sure that this is what evolution was meant to be? Unfortunately, we often pose like this, with a tendency to look down, to stoop, and perhaps to miss the chance of our life to see Mr. or Mrs. Wright sitting next to us in the airplane. So be honest, how many times per day do you use your smartphone? How many times per day do you look down? And instead, how many times do you look up? And I'm not so mean to ask you per day. <laughs> To me, being human means three more things. First, what makes us human is to look up. As in the old school, you remember the picture with Platon and Aristoteles. He points up to the world of ideas. Ancient populations, they were looking up to take inspiration, to find their strength. They looked for God. They looked for the unknown to question our foundations, who are we, where do we come from? And they built temples and churches, pyramids, pointed all upwards to the sky. And this here is the skyscraper where I grew up as a child in Germany, born in a multicultural family with a refugee background. My father is Greek, my mother is half Polish, half German. And growing up in a skyscraper, I can tell you, it was a wonderful childhood and it had fundamental advantages. This building was big, it was high, and there was the need to direct my attention upwards. First, for practical reasons, to see if my parents are already at home. But second, and more importantly for me, it helped me to ask questions, like, how high is this skyscraper? Is it touching the sky? How far away is it from touching the stars? I didn't live on the top floor, so I wanted obviously to know what happens if I live on the top floor? Can I then reach the stars? So the second thing that makes us human is to explore, to ask questions and seek answers, which lead to more questions. And do not hesitate to ask questions. None of you. Einstein already said, never stop questioning. And Einstein was smart, right? So try things out. 
try to search for the unknown. Our ancestors, they made fire, they invented the wheel, the compass, they crossed the Atlantic. They invented the light bulb, cross continents. They launched an artificial satellite, they invented the press engine. They also flew to space 56 years ago, Yuri Gagarin. I mean, he was one of us, not an extraterrestrial. He was one of us with the same blood fleecing, flow, flowing through his body. And eight years later, Neil Armstrong, he stepped on the moon. So watch the beginning of the TV series, The Big Bang Theory, then you understand what I mean. To me also, what makes us human, a third thing is to dream, and to dream big. The bigger, the better. Do you have dreams? Do you have dreams since your childhood? Sometimes dreams come also later in life. And if you don't find a dream, ask yourself, and I hope that after my talk you will find one quickly. <laughs> my biggest dream since my childhood is to become an astronaut. Triggered? by a skyscraper, to look up, right? <laughs> I want to fly to the stars, I want to touch the sky. And I want to understand also, how far away is it? But before looking up, exploring, dreaming, there was something else, another driving force, an inner impulse. And this was curiosity. So this is me, eight years old. And I was always driven by curiosity. My parents and also my family can tell you. I always went for the most difficult experiment. I uh, guess that's perhaps also why I had lenses that looked like magnifying glasses. <laughs> and uh, I really loved to experiment. I loved mathematics and physics um, in times where technology was not uh, electronic, but still mechanical. We were building tape recorders apart with our dad and then trying to reassemble them. I also liked sketching listening to music, doing sports. And my ideals were not the Take That or the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I really fell in love with Leonardo da Vinci and Einstein. These were my inspirations. I also wanted to be like Mrs. MacGyver. And I wanted to step on the moon, like Neil Armstrong did. My mom used to tell me, don't mix up his name, please. He's not Louis Armstrong, that's a jazz musician. Neil Armstrong, that's the right first name to remember, to step on the moon. <laughs> and to the younger generation in this audience also, if all these names do not sound familiar to you, please Google them. History is important in nowadays. But after my talk. <laughs> so encouraged by my parents, I followed my passion to study engineering at the University of Darmstadt and at the University of California in Berkeley. And then driven by my passion for science, technology and research, I started my PhD. And to give you an idea of my thesis, what you see in this video, it's rain. So as if I understood what's happening today in Athens, it rains. So in my childhood and as a swimmer, because I was fascinated by water, I observed raindrops. And I was trying to understand, is there some regularity, some kind of pattern inside? And with my twin sister, we tried to keep one drop on our fingernail while waiting for the bus. So these were games of the past. <laughs> and later on, guess what? I ended up investigating spray impact. So spray consists of several unique drops impacting on the surface, creating the splashes and crowns, and under the effect of gravity. So for sure you have also seen these beautiful crowns forming in some milk or uh, coffee advertisement. And I had great luck to do research under unique conditions. So to give you an idea, weightlessness was produced on board such a parabolic flight. You can see here a maneuver of one parabola. It is like being on a roller coaster basically. So this is just one parabola and we fly 31 of them on a day. So the airplane is pulled up approximately to 45 degrees and then on the peak of the curve you have approximately 20 seconds of microgravity where everything inside the airplane, the experiments and also human beings are weightless for 20 seconds. 
And finally, then the pullout is starting, and the pilot is doing, as I mentioned before, the maneuver again and again, 31 times. Do you recognize anybody? <laughs> I asked my professor back in 2005, um, can I also be on board this airplane? And he answered back, you must be on board, because you are the one who is triggering your experiment. So this picture was taken back in 2005 during my first parabolic flight, funded by the German Space Agency, where we figured out that sometimes, instead of these crowns, there are floating donuts of water formed. And this picture should show you that doing research is a lot of fun. And even more fun is the first parabola, a special one, that is called the fun parabola. And I have provided a video for you. <laughs> so being curious and a swimmer, I asked myself, can astronauts swim? Well, you understand that I'm really having fun with giggling around. <laughs> but as you can see, not really. I couldn't swim because there was no resistance. But I had fantastic 20 seconds of my life, floating like an astronaut, and understanding that obviously it's not possible because someone needs to give you an impulse to move on forward. But these 20 seconds of weightlessness, they confirmed my dream, even stronger, that I want to be an astronaut. After that, I built rocket experiments. And my payload was launched on board a ballistic research rocket. I didn't fly to space. But my research experiment did, and this picture. I attached this picture to my experiment. I guess it's a female thing, huh? we are more emotional than men. So I attached it and I said, okay, I'm not flying to space, my experiment is flying to space, but I want just to send a little message to my universe. <laughs> so in the last 10 years, after my PhD, I was leading complex international projects. And my job has become, actually, a vocation. Space has become my passion through all my blood. And if, as if this were not enough, do you remember the idols I mentioned before? So here is my magic moment. I was lucky enough to meet Neil Armstrong, and I will never forget his warm handshake and his warm-hearted eyes. And I couldn't meet Neil Armstrong, I thought, without bringing a present, so... What kind of present do you bring someone who stepped on the moon, right? <laughs> I mean, he has everything on Earth, he even saw the moon. So I thought, okay, but with empty hands, I can't encounter this special person. So I thought, okay, something personal. And I thought, okay, chocolate. People like chocolate, right? So there's a special chocolate in Germany, um, gold foiled, it's quadratic, and it's written Olympia on it. So it was already rebranded some time ago, and I thought, okay, I will bring him this special chocolate Olympia so he would remember my name, my first name. And then I thought, well, in case he doesn't like chocolate or I wasn't aware about his health issues, I thought, okay, music. Music is also like multilingual. So I brought him a CD of our latest concert. I play piano that I performed in. And as you can see, step by step, I have been moving forwards towards my dream to become an astronaut. But the final step is still missing. In 2007, I didn't make it. I was not even selected for the next round at the ESA astronaut selection. I was too young and I couldn't provide sufficient professional experience. Last year, there was a launch of a private campaign in Germany. And again, I didn't make it to the last rounds. But there's a Japanese proverb that says, Nana korobi yaoke. And literally it seems, seven falls, eight getting ups. So the message I want to give you is that success may not be fast, but what is important is, do not give up your dreams, do your absolute best, and remain persistent. Was giving up an option for me? Never. Instead of making one step, I thought, okay, 
I will have to need to do additional steps to reach my dream. And no matter how long it takes, I will fly to space. That's my dream, right? As for babies, when babies fall down, that's the way of learning to walk. They don't remain on the floor. They get themselves back up again. And this is why it is so important to dream big. From below, this mountain seems so immense, so powerful, impossible to conquer. But I, I see it as a challenge and look instead from above. Once you reach the peak, a stunning panorama awaits you that you could have not been imagining from seeing it below, right? So without having climbed to the top of these mountains, going through failures and mistakes, how can you experience this beauty? So listen to your inner voice. Look up to follow your biggest dream. And if you fall down, strive harder. It will all make sense later in your life, believe me. And to me, the peak of the mountain that I showed you before is to become an astronaut. So we are all together on this blue marble. It looks so fragile, with no borders from above. To me, this picture is the result of humanity. And in order <laughs> You see, I talk about human, right? <laughs> I tried to control. I cried yesterday also in the rehearsal, but it was at the moment where I spoke about Neil Armstrong. So, <laughs> so this picture to me is a result of humanity. In order to do this, to capture this picture, there was someone who first was curious, who looked upwards. Second, who wanted to explore, to ask and seek answers. And third, who went beyond, who went beyond exploration, following a big dream. And to me, this is what makes us human. I would like to give you this message to you, to take these messages, and every day to be a better person, and I would like to give you the support of the world, which, with the support of the Valijak, is coming to my father from Greece to Germany. Και μητέρα μου από τη Πολωνία, με δυσκολία και πολέμους ανάμεσα τη Πολωνία και τη Γερμανία. Όλα αυτά μου τα δώσανε μόνο με, με συνέπεια. Δε, δεν μετράνε τα, τα χρυνο, η, η οικονομική άνεση. Είναι ευέλειους, είναι αξίες που είναι δωρεάν στη ζωή μας. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Thank you very much for your attention.